After a period of time, SpaceX has finally broken the quiet regarding the launch date for its fifth Starship test flight. Unfortunately, it's not good news for us space enthusiasts as the Starship flight's been delayed even further, now pushed to the end of November, and this is all due to the FAA getting in the way. So what's the reason, and how angry was Elon? Let's find out in today's episode of Alpha Tech. In recent weeks, engineers at the Starship launch facility in South Texas have upgraded the launch pad to carry out an ambitious plan to catch Super Heavy when it returns to Earth. The booster, bigger than a Boeing 747, will land vertically using Raptor engines, slowing down to almost a hover before getting caught by two mechanical arms on the launch pad. This is going to be the first time SpaceX tests the technique of catching a rocket mid-air. Although Super Heavy is designed for reuse, like the first stage of the Falcon 9, the recovery method is a little bit different. Instead of landing on an offshore platform hundreds of miles out, SpaceX aims to bring back the booster directly to the launch pad. If that's successful, this technique will simplify the process and cut operational costs. Everything would be fine if SpaceX were granted permission by the FAA to launch on the scheduled date. But the FAA not only dismissed launch dates in late September or early next month, but delayed the flight even further, not now until at least November. It's understandable that such a unique operation would require additional time to analyze from a licensing perspective, SpaceX said. Unfortunately, instead of focusing resources on critical safety analysis and collaborating on rational safeguards to protect both the public and the environment, the licensing process has been repeatedly derailed by issues ranging from the frivolous to the patently absurd. Elon Musk, who has repeatedly placed his trust in earlier launch schedules, has grown very impatient with the latest news from the FAA. He shared related tweets, particularly a SpaceX tweet, emphasizing the importance of Starship for future missions. Starship's fully and rapidly reusable design will exponentially increase humanity's ability to access and utilize outer space, to unlock its full potential and do it rapidly enough to meet commitments to national priorities like NASA's Artemis program, Starship's need to fly. Indeed, it is crucial for Starship to conduct timely test flights as it undergoes development. SpaceX needs Starship to demo new tech in order to quickly create the most perfect version of the biggest and most powerful spacecraft in the world. The more we fly safely, the faster we learn. The faster we learn, the sooner we realize full and rapid rocket reuse, according to SpaceX. Additionally, in a podcast interview, Elon outlined that... Starship is, the next flight of Starship is ready to fly. We are waiting for regulatory approval... You know, quipping at the slow regulatory process for Starship Flight 5, he added, It really should not be possible to build a giant rocket faster than the r paper can move from one desk to another. This confirms that the only barrier for Starship's Flight 5 now is the launch permit from the FAA. Even more importantly is the ambitious of getting to Mars, the only way to save humanity from Earth's doomsday. Elon also tweeted, We will never get humanity to Mars if this continues. So, why does the FAA need to downplay the urgency of such missions, critical to both national and human interests, just because of false and misleading reports built on bad faith hysterics from online detractors or special interest groups who presented poorly constructed science as fact? SpaceX also asserts that the delays from the FAA aren't based on new safety concerns, but rather unnecessary environmental analysis. The initial reason cited for further FAA investigation was Starship's water-cooled steel flame deflector. This component's become the target of false reports, wrongly accusing it of polluting the environment or operating entirely outside regulations. These stories overlook basic facts, which have either been ignored or deliberately misunderstood. In reality, SpaceX has never operated the deflector without a permit. The company's acted in good faith under a general multi-sector permit, including flood discharge activities under the supervision of the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality. SpaceX worked closely with TCEQ to implement multiple mitigation measures before use, including the installation of containment tanks, the construction of protective barriers, sealing discharge points during operations, and using only portable water, which never comes into contact with any industrial process. Several permits were granted and came into effect in July of last year. TCEQ officials were present and in person during the first test of the water spray system and were given the opportunity to watch activities around the launch time. The water-cooled steel deflector does not release pollutants into the surrounding environment. Once again, it literally uses potable water. Water discharge from the system has been sampled after each use, consistently showing negligible traces of any pollutants, with all levels below the thresholds permitted by state discharge permits. 
TCEQ, the FAA, Fish and Wildlife, they've all reviewed the system used before its initial deployment and during tests and launches, determining that no, it's not going to harm the environment. Of course, there have been questions about claims that SpaceX had to pay fines to CEQ and the EPA. SpaceX clarified that the fines were entirely related to paperwork discrepancies. And the rumors that SpaceX's water is hurting the environment, that's just false. The next two reasons that prompted further scrutiny by the FAA are changes to Starship that have been in place for some time, leaving one to wonder what the FAA has been doing these last three months, only for these changes to now become reasons. According to the company, the two main reasons for the delay are the hot staging interstage and the landing profile for catching Super Heavy Starship with a launch tower. These issues led the FAA to ask for an additional 60-day consultation with the National Marine Fisheries Service regarding the hot staging interstage with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Services regarding the landing profile. For the ring, SpaceX shared that the only proposed modification for Starship's fifth flight is a marginal change in the splashdown location of the hot stage, which produces no increase in likelihood for impacting marine life. This single issue, which was already exhaustively analyzed, could indefinitely delay launch without addressing any plausible impact to the environment, SpaceX said. Since Starship Super Heavy will return to the launch tower, it'll inevitably create sonic booms, and as a slightly larger area could experience a sonic boom, the FAA has now requested additional consultations. SpaceX previously released an assessment back in July explaining that Starship sonic booms would not pose a danger when the FAA publicly reviewed the company's plan to accelerate the frequency of Starship launches in Texas. In its release, SpaceX notes that sonic booms were present during NASA's space shuttle return and were also a regular part of the Falcon 9 booster landings. It adds that the booms created by a Super Heavy booster will be more powerful than those generated by Falcon landings. However, SpaceX believes it will not pose any risk of injury to those in the surrounding areas, since the strongest effects will be localized to the areas immediately around the Starbase launch pad. All this stems from the FAA's delays in processing permits. Last year, company officials urged the FAA to double its licensing staff to handle apps for commercial launches and reentry. Congress approved a funding increase for the FAA's Office of Commercial Space Transportation of $42 million for FY24. Over the past year, FAA's space office added 35 workers, bringing the total staff to 158. But this still seems insufficient given the slow pace in processing launch permits and the lack of resources to oversee space activities. SpaceX argues that the delay in launching the next Starship test flight isn't due to technical readiness, but rather that the FAA is just overwhelmed by the rapid growth of the commercial launch industry. With SpaceX launching rockets quickly and other companies conducting human suborbital spaceflights, the FAA has had to significantly expand its operations. However, there's a stark reality that not all companies are scrutinized by the FAA as closely as SpaceX. For example, Boeing. The Starliner has not been subject to nearly as many investigations, even though it failed to return astronauts Butch Wilmore and Suni Williams to Earth. Starliner still received certification without much difficulty. This is due to the company's business structure, which mirrors the bureaucratic nature of the government, as Boeing generates significant revenue from government contracts. Elon commented. Um, well, I mean, I think Boeing is a company that is... You know, they actually do so much business with the government, they have sort of impedance match to the government. So they're, they're like basically one notch away from the government, maybe two. They're not far from the government from an efficiency standpoint because they derive so much of the revenue from the government. Commenting on Boeing's recent leadership changes that has seen a new CEO take charge, Musk stated, I think at least up until perhaps recently, because they have a new CEO who actually shows up in the factory, and the CEO before that, I think, had a degree in accounting and never went to the factory and didn't know how airplanes flew. I think if you're in charge of a company that makes airplanes fly and spacecraft go to orbit, then it can't be a total mystery as to how they work. Marketing knowledge for CEOs of consumer products like carbonated beverages is fine, believes Musk, but a CEO of an aircraft and spacecraft company needs to understand how these vehicles work. As for Starship, Musk shared that it Starship is the first rocket design where success is one of the possible outcomes with full reusability. Um, so if we, you know, for any given project, you have to say, this is the circle, so about Venn diagram. Um, here's a circle, and it is success, the success dot in the circle, um, <laughs> is, is success in the set of possible outcomes. That there are projects where success is not in the possible outcome, but with Starship, not only is success one outcome, but it's already being proven with each launch, believes the executive. That's all for today's episode. Thanks for watching and see you next time.